In the last few months, ever since the James Webb Space Telescope became operational, there has been quite a few unusual and somewhat intriguing discoveries coming from really distant parts of the observable universe, with the biggest discoveries being various galaxies that were discovered to exist in very early universe, possibly about a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. With a lot of these discoveries of these various galaxies raising really big questions, with I guess the biggest question being how could they possibly exist so early in the universe or how could they form so quickly? I know there are some explanations and certain explanations do involve possible miscalculations of computer simulations from before, the explanation that you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description, there are also other explanations involving more exotic things, or involving hypothetical ideas that have always been proposed but never really proven, mostly because some of those ideas are just really difficult to confirm through observational science. And in this video we're going to be discussing one of these propositions and one of these potential explanations that to some extent does kind of make sense, assuming that you accept something for granted. Here we have to accept the existence of dark matter as some kind of a particle that's able to interact with other particles through gravitational forces, but also a particle that can sometimes self-annihilate, producing energy that's released in certain frequencies. And so what exactly are we talking about? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss this very intriguing recent paper that was just published not so long ago that asks a very interesting question. Is there any chance that certain detections from the James Webb Space Telescope are not actually galaxies? Can they be something entirely different, in this case, supermassive dark stars? Unusual objects that would combine dark matter and regular matter and would produce very specific effects visible from really far away. But also hypothetical objects that are not really far off from current explanations of modern physics. In essence, they would contain a lot of dark matter in the center, surrounded by a lot of gas. So nothing too unusual, nothing too hypothetical, but if these dark stars are confirmed, it could once and for all prove the existence of dark matter. And so let's discuss this particular proposition and this paper in a little bit more detail, but let's start with what exactly these dark matter stars would actually be. And first of all, it really all depends on the interpretation of dark matter as a particle. So first of all, this is not to be confused with any kind of a black hole or similar phenomena involving singularity. Second of all, it kind of really depends on the interpretation of dark matter. Here it has to be a particle that's able to self-annihilate, producing energy. But a particle that doesn't interact with anything except for through gravitational forces. So most likely not an axion, but possibly something related to a neutrino or another relatively low in mass particle. At the same time, for the most part, even though there is a lot of dark matter on the inside, these objects would also contain quite a lot of regular gas, hydrogen, helium, or possibly even something else. But in this case, because of the dark matter chunk in the middle, and because of a lot of gravitational forces from nearby dark matter, none of this hydrogen or helium would achieve dense enough states to produce fusion. In other words, it would still be there, producing a really large cloud, but this cloud would be more or less low in density, not able to create anything other than a large nebula, possibly resembling something like this. But the actual light produced here is not the result of fusion and also not the result of friction, which is usually what happens around supermassive black holes. Instead, it actually is the result of dark matter interaction close to the center, with all of the heat and all of the emissions produced via annihilation, something that would happen as a result of various dark matter particles interacting very close to one another, releasing very large amounts of heat as a result of very compact and very dense chunks in the middle. But because of this heat coming from the annihilation, it would force a lot of other gas, such as hydrogen, to sort of stay on the outskirts and thus prevent collapse or formation of any star-like objects. But in this case, these objects would be very unique. Unlike stars that would be much smaller, or galaxies that would be much bigger, this would be somewhere in between. The gas cloud would be anywhere from 4 to maybe 2000 astronomical units across, making these objects relatively small in size, less than one light year and of course making these objects appear as a kind of a point source from ridiculously far away distances. But they would also possess ridiculously high surface temperatures and very high luminosity, and especially a lot of gamma rays or high energy particles resulting from the annihilation of dark matter, but also eventually disappearing with time, potentially becoming something else entirely. 
As a matter of fact, modern theories suggest that none of these objects would very likely exist today, and if they do exist, they would be practically invisible and much lower in density, only detectable through various emissions of gamma rays and the presence of the gas around them. And so the question here is, how exactly did the study here connect all of these observations from the James Webb with many of these hypothetical propositions? Well, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. It's actually in regards to this particular galaxy that's currently believed to be the farthest confirmed galaxy ever discovered, at the redshift of 13.2. Then what's intriguing about this galaxy is its unusual point source origin, with the other two galaxies visible in this image right here. All of these galaxies very likely existed when the universe was anywhere from 320 to possibly 450 million years old. But even though they all resemble an unusual red point, or basically suggest that these are point sources, it's really their overall brightness that makes them somewhat unusual. It basically implies an extremely powerful star formation if these are stars, but also something that seems to be happening in a very, very compact volume of space. And early on, these galaxies were exciting as a potential source to discover first stars, so-called population 3 stars. The first stars that must have ignited the universe and very likely were responsible for the formation of everything else around us. Today it's actually believed that some of these stars could have become extremely massive, up to 10,000 solar masses. And so the discovery of these galaxies provided a potential source for their search. But when it comes to first stars, there was always that other theory, the theory of dark stars or dark matter stars. And so actually in modern cosmology, there are two potential types for first stars, either population 3 stars, consisting of hydrogen and helium, reaching enormous masses and exploding as powerful supernova, possibly only thousands of years after, and we actually only have hints of their existence as reported in the video in the description, or something similar to a dark matter star, something that we understand even less. Both are technically possible, and both could even coexist, but as of this year, there was just not enough evidence. But the unusual fact that they were just too bright and seemed to be really, really small in size made these somewhat unusual discoveries. But I guess the question is, so what evidence does this paper provide for these being something more unusual, like dark matter stars, and not your regular stars? Now, at the moment, there's not a lot of evidence, but the evidence that is here is kind of exciting. First of all, when it comes to population 2, population 3 stars, when looking at the absorption spectrum coming from these galaxies, it should be similar to other distant galaxies we've discovered so far, including the Lyman break you see right there. But if these are dark matter stars, or dark stars, because of the amount of helium around them, they're also going to have a separate absorption spectrum, helium-2 spectrum, that would be absent in a typical galaxy. And that's mostly because they basically contain a lot of hydrogen and helium around them, which would create two different absorption lines. And what's intriguing is that this was actually proposed back in the days, back in 2011, when the James Webb telescope was still being planned, and basically about 10 years before its official launch. Here the scientists proposed that if we actually do find these hypothetical early dark stars, they're most likely going to contain these unusual helium-2 absorption spectra. And while the preliminary analysis from this paper kind of suggests that they might be there. In other words, it suggests that these unusual three point sources also seem to contain definitive signs of not actually being galaxies, but instead being dark stars. Objects potentially 1 million solar masses in mass, at least according to their current luminosity, but as a result of dark matter, producing a luminosity of billions of suns, and also being roughly around 10,000 solar radii in radius. So basically still being relatively small compared to a typical galaxy, much larger than a typical star, but also way, way more luminous and way more massive. Although well, unfortunately, at the moment, that's really the only evidence we have. But the scientists in this paper does suggest additional evidence that we can actually discover with further observations using other telescopes. For example, their spectrum should be very different in certain wavelengths, especially approximately 5 micrometer wavelengths. These are not wavelengths the James Webb was able to see. We basically need to use some kind of a radio telescope for that. Likewise, trying to create an even more detailed image of this, and potentially seeing a little bit more detail in terms of size, might help us determine if these are point sources or something similar to a typical early galaxy. And because of the amount of observations so far and extreme distances, we don't actually have this information just yet. But this is still a very intriguing proposition with very intriguing observations. And even if one of these objects is proven to be a dark star, it will dramatically change modern cosmology. Okay, I guess not really. 
It will provide important evidence for the modern cosmology, once and for all showing us that dark matter is definitely out there as a kind of a particle. And in some cases these particles can even create very unusual dark star objects. Something would be very difficult to explain otherwise, but it's still very early to tell. Despite these being point sources, they could still just be really really small, super super active galaxies, very different from anything else we expect. Although in this case, explaining the helium absorption line is still kind of challenging. Nevertheless, these are definitely exciting times and will most likely lead to incredible discoveries in the next few years. Until then, thank you for watching, check out relevant videos in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt featuring James Webb's space telescope as well. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.